My name is Jeff Reeder. I'm a firefighter with the City of Prince Albert for 15 years. I was a volunteer firefighter at the age of 15. Ended up loving it. Knew I wanted to pursue a career in firefighting. I think the majority of people get into this line of work because they are passionate about their community and helping people. I've always been that way and, and still am today. And I never was really bothered by like carnage and stuff like that. So I think it just kind of seemed like a natural fit. I enjoy the schedule. It kind of gives me some flexibility and time with the family and I coach my kids when I can. December 19th, 2006 was a turning point for me. My wife and I were on our way to Saskatoon uh, when she was pregnant with our first child and we were in a car accident and she was hit on her door and she was pinned and I remember seeing the look on her face and you know, the screams, and I just remember feeling helpless being next to her, and I actually couldn't help her. Doesn't remember the accident because she was knocked out through the whole thing, so I just, you know, she had the physical injuries and I had the, the mental injuries where I was awake and I got back to work and just kind of pretended like it didn't happen. My wife was fine, she made a recovery, so life goes on. You know, I started going to calls and then having flashbacks. So, you know, each time I relived it, it just kind of got worse and then I couldn't get it out of my head. You know, I had anxiety 24 seven, it never went away. I wasn't thinking clearly, my heart was racing all the time. At one point, I think 2010, I finally hit a wall and I couldn't function. I knew that I needed to do something for myself because I knew this wasn't normal. I had to, I had to get help, so I took a year and three months off. You know, at that time, not knowing what I'm supposed to do, there was no roadmap, oh, do this, do this, and, you know, conventional treatments. After nine months, I was cut off. I, I was supposed to be healed at that point. And I was no further ahead. I couldn't control my anger. As a new father, I, I you know, I, I never knew having kids without PTSD, so I felt, I felt ripped off. My kids never knew me. It wasn't something that I would ever want anybody ever to go through. It was the worst time of my life. I always wanted horses as a kid, and we had some at the farm, so I just stepped into a round pen with a horse, and that was the first time that my symptoms were gone. I figured, well, geez, this seems to be helping, so let's roll with it. It gave me some of the skills and tools that I needed for myself. I really started to focus on learning and understanding what post-traumatic stress is and what I needed to do to learn how to rewire my brain in a positive way. And gradually over the next you know, four months, I started to see improvements and then I made a full return and I've been back to work ever since. So I said, well, okay, well, I'll maybe start a program and help other first responders that have been hurt like I have been. And we formed the SAS First Responders Mental Health Committee. You know, it was a great working relationship with WCB. Clinicians have been added, some occupational awareness training for clinicians. There's a lot of different tools that are available to the workplace or the worker or even family members. One of the big things that we're working on on the committee is anti-stigma messaging, making people aware that just because you've been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, you're not, it's an injury just like a broken leg. It's not the end of the world. You're not broken forever. It requires some um, particular resources to get better, but know that post-traumatic stress is real, but so is recovery. There is hope out there. Reach out.